I I was really standing there and thinking like who can who can say that they've that they've played this that they've had the opportunity to to do this you know one more time until uh, un- until whenever Vincent Neumann. Hey. Hey, hey Vincent. Hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Hey, I'm pretty good. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thanks for being here. Of I course, of course, anytime. Means a lot. Means a lot. Cool. I heard you have a pretty nice and interesting story of distillery. Uh yeah, uh that club is probably the reason I started uh liking techno and it basically ruled my my life or part of my life for the last oh my god almost 20 years yeah and unfortunately that place has to move which is kind of sad but uh it will move to another place which is also kind of beautiful in a way you know because that means new people will come in and there's going to be like new sound hopefully and that's it's kind of weird to to see the the place where you went to like at least once a month for the last 20 years to disappear and yeah i still i still haven't realized it you know maybe once the bulldozers arrive and plan it down yeah. then it, it'll hit me but for now i'm like it's weird like i'm in a weird stasis how do you moment. feel about that uh I'm quite quite moved uh, because originally the club was supposed to close 10 years ago, I think. So there was always this specter that uh, the place will have to move. But through Steffen Kache, the boss, uh, it got changed again and again, the date. But now it, it finally arrived. And I don't know, it's kind of like, you know, something is, is going to happen. But once that bullet hits you, it hits like in a in a different way. Even though you see it coming, you sure. know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It's like it's it's still weird, yeah. But at the same time, I'm hopeful for the events that that so will it's come. It's just moving, and that's the good thing. Yeah, like yeah. It's not a club that's dying right now because yeah, the yeah, distillery yeah. has been and like still is and will be. I don't know if it's still gonna s- stay as distillery. Yeah, yeah. Like you can tell us maybe. Yeah. Um, ah. The the place is moving like it continues, it's just not gonna shut down and like. No, that's no, it. no, no. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. Like to see an institution like this one. Yeah. Continue and survive. For sure, for sure. Like if if it were to permanently close down. I think I would be like still sitting at home, like crying and and thinking about you know what would be taken taken away from us and from the scene, you know. But seeing that it's gonna continue, that's like you know it's kind of sad, but at the same time, I'm I'm happy that it gets to continue. That's beautiful to to hear like this kind of these beautiful words like from you as an artist that you have been in the scene like for so many years that you hear like hey because like you really understand and like promote also like these feelings that you, you yeah. create on the dance floor like i mean this is uh, how we've met yeah. as well and <laughs> yeah, now you're yeah. sitting here and we're talking about this and yeah, like, yeah. T- 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 it's bonding oh yeah 100 percent. and i think especially uh, not to beat a dead horse but corona has shown in so many different ways that these places where we go to or where we are part of are so much more than discotheques you know they're like safe spaces they're spaces for people to meet for people to connect for people to exchange and once that was taken or shut down for a while it really hit hard like i was at home like thinking to myself like what am i supposed to do on the weekends you know and it was really weird at first then i found out huh you can actually meet the people (laughs) you meet in clubs Outside of clubs, mm. Whoa, you know, without strobes, <laughs> like <laughs> bass, <laughs> loud music playing. Yeah, like, this is what you really look like. <laughs> yeah, I said, Whoa, you have a sister? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, and I think that that made people like appreciate it even more, like those those spaces. You know, I'm I'm sure you remember when uh, we were allowed to go to clubs again, 
And then the government shut down again. I think it made it even more painful for us, you know. I think yeah, it did definitely. Um, what I realized in the past months is to, like, I, I really got to learn that there were so many promoters and illegal parties in raves that we are just, especially in Germany, we were a part of the world that did not did not have like the chance to or like we just like stick to the rule. Yeah, and pretty German thing. It's as a well. very German thing. It's in our genes. Yeah, and. Uh, It was very interesting like to see that some people did, some people didn't. And like to see also like how the the whole pandemic like developed itself. Yeah. If it's good or not, I I don't think there is a proper answer for that. But like to see that doesn't matter. Like now, now I see the good things about it. Because like during the pandemic I was like, hey, fuck the this kind of mindset, like just to go to a rave. But like yeah. now you really realize how important it is to go and just like to let go of your everyday life, especially yeah. during a time when yeah. you're supposed to stay at home and don't do anything and just like to do everything that's not human at all. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I I totally agree. And I think the the good thing about the last three years is basically that we fortunately don't take this for granted anymore, you know, especially in Germany where in, in Berlin and other major cities where the market is so oversaturated with clubs. There's parties like every weekend, like big acts. And once that got shut down, I think we realized, hey, this isn't something, you know, that we can just count on like every day, mm -hmm. especially in different countries. Like if you go to Georgia, you know, Bassiani, uh, Kidi, the people there, like for them, it's not just fun and games. Like for them, this is really, really important, you know, like not even... The, the escapism but just the opportunity to to meet like-minded people and to be themselves yeah yeah and express themselves freely mm. and have like an, an open and safe space to to in a way also find themselves or what interests them you know we're very privileged in germany like especially in berlin i don't know how it is in leipzig like i didn't have the chance to go there yet yeah i was too lazy also that's okay or like that's okay. busy yeah <laughs> yeah i mean but yeah so uh, how, how do you see that Uh, that we're privileged in Germany. Yeah, it's just like if you if you com continue co to compare like the context that's on one side, for example, in in uh, at Bassiani, like uh -huh. it's for them like the kind of occasion, like just like to be themselves and like just like to bloom. Which here, yeah, and uh, especially in Berlin, where you have like too much offer, like it doesn't matter in what creative field you're working uh, in. Yeah, yeah. You just like I have the feeling, or I observed many many egos, uh, like different groups, and like you really have to be careful about who you hang out with yeah because it's really it's difficult yeah, yeah it's difficult like you really gotta learn how to swim in the sea full of shark we can say yeah I guess. Yeah, yeah 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 100 yeah absolutely how is leipzig um i would say leipzig is a bit not just a bit like quite less quote-unquote toxic than berlin because as you said The, the scene here is so big. There's like so much power and money involved. And in Leipzig, that is too, but on a much smaller scale. And people are, in my opinion, uh, much more open to talk about like different ways to create parties and, and spaces, you know. But I definitely agree that in Germany, especially, people are very privileged. Um, and after Corona, I want to say most have started questioning that or at least realizing that they're like very privileged you know i i will tell everyone that i'm incredibly privileged to be able to go on tour and see different cities different countries meet new people and it's not something that is to be taken for granted but if you're like in the scene for a very long time you kind of start thinking this is like the normal way mm -hmm. you know but that is absolutely not the case Yeah, so see, uh, like there was an article uh, in the past weeks uh, on uh, Resident Advisor that uh -huh. was uh, showing a study and telling that many, many young people do not go out as much as we did a few years ago. Uh -huh. And uh, Corona has also a big impact on that, also on the financial side, like also with the war, like the inflation yeah, and all yeah. these different factors, uh, the increasing DJ fees as well. Oh like yeah, that article, uh, yeah, yeah the mainstream uh like the mainstreamization of 
the the scene as well yeah like there's so many factors where also like little uh, promoters cannot afford just like to live from that yeah because yeah. like nowadays you have one dj uh that's asking for like the price of a whole lineup for example yeah yeah, yeah. which is kind of very difficult and like i'm not saying that this price is not justified because like everything became more and more expensive but like this uh this brings us by uh, back to the to the privilege thing uh-huh. absolutely yeah so and like there is many many other ways for example like we also observe this like in the tattoo world uh-huh. uh where um, since the beginning like i I learned tattooing like during corona uh-huh. so i used this time like to learn uh-huh. and like the whole difference uh, that got me told like my, my colleague told me like from the before and now price are even going down on tattoos and like on even on big artists that are very very famous okay. and like okay. do an amazing job yeah. and they like tattoos are a luxury and like not a necessity and yeah so yeah. we see it like in other other ways like in uh, in this kind of industry as well mm-hmm. did yeah. you perceive that somehow like with uh, tattoos on the dance floor like people that are tattooed in your context um i think it's definitely i want to say i don't know if you know the saying but uh like many many years ago like uh, decades ago if you were tattooed you were you were either a criminal or a sailor or both you know and nowadays tattoos are like so normalized it's kind of like almost at a point that it's like a gimmick for some people and i mean there's there's people that will tell you a story about each of their tattoos that they have you know and there's other people that will tell you i don't know what the fuck this is i got high and then i went to like a tattoo parlor and got it done you know so there's there's uh, different different kinds of groups you know Mm -hmm. but yeah i i really like the aesthetic of uh some tattoos but i'm 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 not in the place to tell someone what they should do with their with their body or something you know but yeah it's it's so cool that you that you found this this outlet you know during corona and have a have an, a way to express your artistic vision through that you know yeah to, to go also like to to leave my computer to go back to drawing more and like to be more creative and especially like to the social side because like also this is how um, i see it as well as like also this project is to to be around people more often every yeah, day yeah. and like to 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 build connections between them because like this is what i i miss during uh, my job as a graphic designer where i was just yeah. like communicating t- through mails instagram and yeah, facebook yeah, yeah. this was very frustrating somehow oh yeah like, yeah i can totally understand that yeah and it's also very interesting to see that we we made a comparison with the kind of misfits that were wearing tattoos before yeah, yeah, yeah. now it gets like on like more mainstream but if you see like also the people going to clubs yeah, yeah club yeah, yeah. culture is more than that right now and like yeah yeah that's the common ground yeah yeah oh yeah club culture has definitely become i want to say quite mainstream at the moment especially with like the young kids uh who come to these raves uh i remember one of the first parties after the first corona lockdown in distillery we had young kids like 18 19 year olds arrive at the party go down to the basement of distillery and actually cry on the dance floor because they were like so floored by the experience they were like oh my god this is my first party like i can feel the bass like all over my body and like that was a beautiful thing to see but unfortunately some of them have not you know studied or found out you know the roots of of the genre you know where it becomes like another gimmick you know you see people wearing uh risky outfits in a way you know and they have like sometimes not an idea of what it stands for you know like if they have a choker or something that's like i don't want to sp- spout the meme but it's like uh, are you sure you want to wear this you know that's but uh, that's also a very big point we've already been talking about uh, in some other podcasts like it's uh-huh. very interesting to to have your opinion as well on that is to we we all observe this kind of gap in yeah. the generation like of part like a generation when uh-huh. well, by parting is like that the younger uh, generation didn't have the chance to get kind of educated by the bigger brothers and yeah, sisters yeah. and like to get all this uh, 
just like this experience done before yeah. even if you had like one two years like in a club this was not enough to get like all the proper values um etiquettes everything yeah the behavior the roots as you mentioned yeah it's yeah. like if you if you would ask like some um 18 year olds who was uh yeah who are like in the detroit scene from the beginning yeah yeah, yeah. kevin saunderson all these kind of guys one atkins yeah yeah, yeah yeah and i and i think it's important for us to to go back and and teach them if they want to be teached you know if they want to the, be taught yeah, the, do you f do you think they're open for that i think so yeah, yeah. i think like but it, it goes it, do you remember when you, when you first started listening to techno you know if there was like some older guy telling you oh you need to listen to this i'd be like fuck you you know that's not interesting to me you know but if someone tells told me hey this is cool what you're listening how about you check out this from that person for example an old jeff mills record and then you'd find out huh what i'm actually hearing has been done before like 20 years ago and that's like whoa yeah, yeah. you know that's like such a mind fuck every time you see it sure kind of like with tattoos you know when you're like discovering techniques and then it's like whoa that actually has been done like many many centuries ago well nowadays we have the kind of neo-tribals yeah yeah it's kind yeah of very For very sure. abstract uh kind of tattoos which is very and especially in Neukölln yeah <laughs> it's Ooh, kind yeah. of <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Er, er is so hard yeah. techno tattoos oh no, my god that is <laughs> that's like such a meme at this point you know the tribal <laughs> tattoos and whatnot yeah but it's it's not that that's the thing like history repeats itself the yeah. cycle of 20 years like you have the matrix aesthetic and all the stuff and yeah, they yeah. all look the same and like they become the meme from themselves yeah, yeah. Like without wanting to be judgy or whatever it's just like it's just a fact and like that that's that's funny actually yeah, to yeah, see yeah. that it's just like hey their parents were doing the exact same yeah, yeah and right now like you have the exact same thing that's popping up 20 years later yeah yeah, yeah. i mean that it's a beautiful thing about age and that's the thing where we don't want to step into this old man yells at cloud thing, you know, with, yeah. uh, you don't know how real parties are because the kids are having fun, you know, yeah, and that's the thing. who am I to judge? Like you're listening to the quote unquote wrong music, you know, if you're having fun, that's cool, you know, and that's like, how we start at the beginning, just as you mentioned, yeah, it's yeah. like, Hey, I, mean, I really like the approach of the, yeah, you like that. That's cool. But maybe you, you've heard like the sample where it comes from or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, um, it's interesting that you say that because I don't remember. Like I discovered techno, it was yeah, fifteen years ago. Somehow uh -huh. I remember that was a, the track stripped from Len Faki and Roman Ponset ah, on Figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very long time ago. Yeah. It got shown by a friend, and then Purple went like from rave to raves, like in Switzerland, like yeah. hidden in the Alps. Very nice people organizing like events, going from house music to French core. Uh -huh. They really, literally had the oh kind God, of that's abroad. And yeah, and uh, the, the parties were going for more than 15 or 16 hours. So it's started very far, like very, yeah. very slow at the beginning or like end of the afternoon. Okay. And then the longer you were going into the night or in the next day, then it got harder and harder and harder. So then you got That's like... That's cool. It goes like like this. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, everyone... Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've all been there, you know, like everyone knows. Like. <laughs> yeah, that, that was like a very kind of like a uh, healthy approach uh, pro yeah well healthy uh, yeah, <laughs> approach to <laughs> to to this to, to the discovery of music and then oh, sure, you, you yeah. went back home completely smashed on a sunday afternoon and you you knew what you will dig on yeah. the whole week yeah 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 and then purple i made my way into the sound and when i came here i was uh, i had the chance to be immediately uh presented to very nice people that were the old guys uh -huh. and they showed me the things but they were not, not, not showing me like hey uh you should listen to this yeah yeah, yeah for but sure. they, they showed me like kind of history slash documentary point of view it's like yeah. hey this is this and this and this and when you hear like from an og berliner what it's all about yeah i was yeah. just like a fucking child five years old listening to the granddad story yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh yeah in the evening and yeah. then yeah purple it became bigger and bigger and yeah 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 now we do this yeah and i think that's that, that's basically the 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 point where we are at this moment where we have to we don't have to but it would be nice if we showed kids hey it's great you're having fun it's great you're part of this how about you check out mm -hmm, like if you want to you mm -hmm. know because i remember uh when i discovered uh, techno or house in 2008 
which is also 15 years ago, I think, uh, I started by listening to, uh, of course, uh, FX Twin. It was like 2007, yeah, six, seven. And then I went on to like breakcore, like Venetian snares. I remember like going to Maria am Ostbahnhof uh, to see him play. And it was like a very niche of a niche scene, you know. The parties were great, but the downside was you had to know the tracks to have fun. You yeah. Know, where yeah, yeah. Whereas with with techno, you don't you don't have to know the tracks. You, you feel them. Yeah, and you can just count along. You know, like one, two, three, four. Ooh, I think something is happening. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like sixteen so bars. Four, okay, four, okay, yeah. okay. Ah, th- now oh, there's a hi hat. Ooh, that's interesting. You know, and that got me very very hooked because it was like an endless sea, and I remember uh, reading some pieces, and I thought they were like so condescending the way they talked about the music that i loved at this point you know like the uh, electro house stuff like justice Sirkin, boys noise all these i i think in hindsight great fucking artists like digitalism all that good stuff Mm -hmm. but if you went on like resident advisor it was like this isn't real techno yeah yeah oh they're not even playing vinyl i'm like bro what are you, like 30? Me, being in my early 20s, I'm like, ha, you're way too old to understand music anyway, you know. But uh, what then <laughs> made me dig deeper was just s- staying uh, in this scene. I remember Boys Noise put out a record uh, with remixes by him that had uh, MMM, Fiddle and Aerosmith, and Robert Hood. And that made me... Yeah, the, huh, uh, yeah, I know, I know the reason. Yeah, 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 like, huh, uh, that that Robert Hood track is cool. Let let me see what he did, and then Minimal Nation. Whoa, what is this? You know, and yeah. I think that's like a very, very healthy way to discover the music, and you know, and not it's so not, much fun. Yeah, 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 and not just being like, hey, you know, you need to, you need to go this, you need to to listen to this, but like, ah, oh, like a kid in a candy store, you know, just like you said. But this is what I see as a problem nowadays, as that through social media. You kind of have a trend that it's like shown. Doesn't matter if it's like music wise or just on the outfits on actually how you mm-hmm. should look like to come back on the yeah. Joker point. Yeah. Um and people do not know why and like do not question this. So you have an illimited access to information, an endless scrolling possibility. Yeah. And then you do, like people do not take time, just like for example, to watch a whole podcast. Oh yeah, 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 of course, of course. The yeah. Attention call like a span like yeah. is so short nowadays, and yeah, if it yeah. doesn't catch you through a strong aesthetic, yeah. you just won't, ma- you just won't keep attention. You will just like scroll and like yeah, yeah. maybe you've seen things, but that's it. Yeah, and like this is something I, I see personally as a chance, like to kind of had educated myself on my side back in Switzerland when I was a teenager, uh-huh. and when I moved to Berlin, I had a base like the bases, and then I got shown the. OG real stuff, yeah, and then I understood why ah, I liked okay, the, okay, the yeah. stuff I was like, because like what I li- was listening to was created because it got inspired by the old yeah, stuff, yeah, 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 exactly, you, exactly, yeah, and then it continues, and uh, to to come back on the, the social media point, I would suggest to take more time in general to discover what you really like and why you really to understand why you really like things yeah and not yeah. necessarily going to back to the roots like because this is at the end like a kind of decision for everyone for sure, i yeah, mean like yeah. we're again here in this kind of field privileged because we know all each other and like this is like super yeah. fun to do and like yeah, we yeah. have like the kind of folks but also through podcasts like this one like or the whole project is a kind of giving away like all this precious information yeah. to make this more easy and like so that people do not have to dig for hours and hours and hours oh, yeah, yeah 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 i think that's that's a that's a great point because uh the way technology changes uh, also hugely influences the way we discover like art forms or music or culture or whatever uh, i went to south africa in 2019 and the promoters told me that uh, they had like very shitty internet for a long time so they didn't have that much access to to music on the internet you know so they only could like download like shitty mp3s illegally of course and once the internet got better the scene started to thrive because they had much more access and much more 
much more possibilities to to dig further you know and i think that's that's a beautiful thing and there's this uh i think the term is like the paradox of too many choices like if you go like to a store and you have like a choice between like uh barbecue sauce and some other kind of sauce it's easy for you to pick but if you have like uh the option to choose between 100 sauces that's like oh my god what do i do yeah exactly exactly and it's the same with music which is why i think a lot of those curated playlists are like so uh, in in demand right now because it's much easier for kids to scan through the music that's a very good thing i think like from a technological point of view is like the automation of all this stuff especially with uh, ai Uh uh like it really brings the whole scene like or scenes creative scenes to a whole other level or just like you write your mails through ais yeah, no, yeah, like, yeah. this is amazing because like, you, you can focus more on your art and what you're doing instead of like typing long and boring mails uh, yeah, thinking yeah, about sure. okay yeah. how is the, like the, the, how, how you say the things the the, the choice yeah. of the words and all this stuff so i think like there's a good good sites as well it's more about if you go out i think you could you should know where you're going out why mm-hmm. and know what you're doing there on yeah. every aspect health finance and let's call it the cool factor the yeah, coolness yeah. factor yeah just know why why you're wearing this kind of clothes on all this stuff yeah 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 i guess it's like a uh, the the in thing to do right now you know to just go out and and have fun which of course you know People who are young, they want to have fun, you know. People who are old want to have fun, you know. We, we also want to have fun, you know. We do. Yeah. But I I think it's uh, it's very nice to see that it uh, is now back in full force. You could say it's a bit too much at the moment. But I think it will come down to a, to a healthy f- a format again, like sooner or later, you know. Because there's always, go- always going to be people who organize parties, like, without asking for, like, any major fees or something you know there's people who sure. who are like hey i just want to i just want to play you know i just want to have fun and play for for free i remember i i used to do that i i was at a point where i was like i'm paying someone to be to able play. to yeah Whoa, to play okay. yeah of course because it was like an, an outlet to express my artistic vision yeah, yeah yeah how would you describe this artistic vision oh my god um someone uh, once coined uh, the the sound that I'm playing as uh, uplifting bangers, <laughs> which I think is like makes quite sense. Fitting. Yeah, 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 makes sense. And because um, I'm I'm like a cheerful person, you know. And when I started DJing, um, I I noticed that you know while there was a lot of great music playing, I th- I thought like sometimes the the smiles on the on the dance floor were missing, you know. Whereas I'm sorry, but whereas it is, like, it's a fact. Yeah, it's whereas fact. whereas music like that that moves and touches me makes me makes me smile all over the place, you know. And uh, techno for me is like one of those places where I can where I can express that, you know, and be like, hey, I I really like the sound. Like, hopefully, hopefully you guys like it too. And I think that's something that's really one of the pivotal points to not think like oh what what might be good for people to hear but also going like i'm i'm confident in in playing like maybe something that is not uh something that everyone plays but where i'm like i'm i'm really enjoying this piece of music you know and i think that that translates well on the on the dance floor if people see you're having fun then they're gonna have fun as well if they see you're letting loose then they're gonna let loose as well you know because no one wants to do the you know, cool contest. I know I've done that forever, but that is so boring to me. So no, not Sh- anymore. Should we talk about that Frank Ocean Berghain opening moment? <laughs> <laughs> that was legendary. Oh, yeah, to, yeah. You really. How did you come on the idea to play Nikes? Um, for for those who who weren't there, um, you're talking about the the closing in December two thousand twenty-one. That was the last night uh, before. Everything had to had to shut down yet again, again yeah. and um, when when I found out that it was uh, this night, 
I, I, I was at home um, in front of my, um, I'm quite mo uh, moved by this, and I was sitting uh, in front of my, my record shelf and I, I, I actually broke down in, in tears because having realized how, how important this, this is to, to all of us, um, I, I was really standing there and thinking, like, who can, who can say that they've, that they've played this, that they've had the opportunity to, to do this, you know, one more time until, uh, un until whenever. And I picked the, the Frank Ocean Nike track because it is such a, such a bittersweet song, you know, and that moment, that, that closing also was bittersweet for us, you know, because I thought, hey, we're going to do this one last time until whenever. And so why not, why not start it with this kind of, kind of feeling? And it was especially fitting because Norman Notch played before me and his last trick was, I think, Brian Ferry, Don't Stop the Dance. <laughs> which wow. was like so <laughs> fitting. And I thought, holy fucking shit, Norman, you're really putting me on the spot. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that was, yeah, that, that was, that was my, I'm, I mean, you, you see it, me, me still being, being moved by that because, yeah, that, that's something I'll, I'll never forget. And it, it's, it's again one of those things where I guess if I had asked like 10 people, hey, should I play this? Most would probably say, what, Boy, exactly, yeah, what yeah. are you doing? You're playing Frank Ocean. No, don't do this. Oh, but I thought, fuck it. I fucking love this track. And I, I think it's really fitting. And it's really important for me to say this. And yeah. And then, <laughs> and then I started playing. And my, my wife was, was behind me. And she was also like, She was also so moved. She was. She Sweet. also started. Yeah, she also started crying. Like, oh my god, this is really happening. Yeah, it was. I, I'll never forget that. And that it worked. Yeah, and it worked. <laughs> yeah I'm. I'm happy it did because <laughs> imagine, like, I, I cleared the floor with. The first <laughs> I would have been like, well, I guess I tried. You know? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and and I think that that's also something uh, with great DJs that they. They are great artists in, in general. They take risks, you know, because everyone can play. Or like with tattoos, everyone can do like tattoos that have been done a million times before, you know. But, whoa, you got an eight ball on your arm. That's crazy, you know. You got a Cadillac, whoa, you know. But, you know, going there and trying something different is something that that you and others will, will remember. Yes. You know? Yes. I think there's also everything works on trust. On that, like there is this, uh, this thing, uh, this together factor oh, that yeah. I really like. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter if it's like club culture or tattooing. It's like that's so why I wanted to leave my 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 past job is like to work with people, not yeah, for people, yeah. just as a service. Yeah, because like yeah, then you have, sure. you build up something, and also like just have to see you so emotional right now, which is a beautiful yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. this is what we're looking for. It's like the the human connection, like to make. Through basic interaction, a better world. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, that's a huge thing we have the chance to, to experience and to offer. Yeah, yeah. But it's so interesting you say that because um, in, I think in, in March, uh, March or April, uh, I played another another opening in, in Berghain and someone sent me um, a post from, from Reddit And a, p a person wrote like, hey, I, I wanted to see Vincent and I came to the opening and there weren't many people there. So I went up to the box next to the, the, to the DJ booth and uh, I noticed that person and I reached out to her and I just, you know, uh, gave her my hand, you know, like, hey, you're here. That's cool. I appreciate you. And she wrote this. I'm, I moved again. Uh, she, she wrote... That it, that it meant a lot to her, you know, like being being acknowledged, which is like weird in a way because you know we're we're people, and at the same time I thought like, but this is like you said, this is what this is about, you know, like connecting like on, on so many on so many different ways, and if I can do that just by reaching out to someone by 
by re- giving them my hand. It's beautiful. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's so like, easy. Yeah, exactly. And the the crazy thing was then I I think I I did a story on this on Instagram, and then someone else uh, reached out to me and told me, hey, um, in 2019, uh, I approached you while you were washing your hands. And you were like so so thankful and and acknowledged, and I'll never forget that. And it it really hit me like people will will remember these small interactions because they they seem small to someone else, but they are huge to you know someone who's in a in yeah. a different uh, frame of mind. And yeah, that's that's the thing that I really want to achieve. You know, by by connecting with with people on the floor. You know, I, I'm not one of those people who thinks uh, h- higher of themselves than others. And yeah, that, that's really something that, that I want to create. I want to create like a space where people feel invited and, and accepted. And not that I'm like sitting on a throne or something, you know, just like, hey, we want to have fun. We want to respect each other, you know, and have like, have like a nice a nice time yeah <laughs> so wow yeah, I'm, I'm yeah that's again. good it's yeah. beautiful thank you for sharing yeah, yeah, yeah. this beautiful story yeah that's yeah, yeah. That's, it's it's so interesting um because um being on the other side um i remember when i used to go party and i i wasn't djing then yet and i remember i think one time Uh, seeing Marcel Detman, my favorite DJ, and he acknowledged me, and I'll never forget that. And uh, in February, I played with him in, in Distillery Leipzig, and he, <laughs> um, you know, Marcel is a, is a tall fucking guy, you know, and he's like very, very approachable, very likable. Yep. And he came to the booth, And the first thing he did was he hugged me. And the second thing was, do you want some champagne? And I was like, of course. Yeah. <laughs> That's so him. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I was like, hey, Marcel, what's up? And then when we were done, uh, he told me, like, hey, um, I, I, I know, I, I knew that when you are part of the lineup, uh, that it was going to be a great night. And I thought, oh, wow. my God. Yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, my God. And so, yeah. So I I, pers- I totally get that feeling that other people have, like being acknowledged, like me being acknowledged by my my kind of DJ hero was like such a rush, you know. It was like incredible, and yeah, that's that's the way to to build these connections, you know, like acknowledging either each other, you know, like when people say, "Hey, I really like what you're doing with your platform," for example, and to be nice. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Fucking, fucking yeah, be yeah. nice, people. Like yeah, you, yeah. You, you can change lives. It's uh, just by simple gesture. Yeah, 100%. Like, and it will it will stay in your head for like a very, very long time. I told Marcel uh, that I, I I met my wife uh, in March 2012 in, in Berghain, obviously. <laughs> and I, I remember telling him that we were obviously making out kissing for nine hours and then we went to see marcel play yeah so we was like okay that's that's working you got so endurance yeah <laughs> uh yeah i left with a lot of pain like in certain areas of my body after that and um we we saw marcel and i'll never forget he played he played funk the void uh jack me off and i told him this like i i saw you play that and he was like yeah i really like that track you know that ever since then every time i play this track i'm like oh, I think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm good. thinking of Marcel. I'm thinking of seeing him like from from the from the Panorama bus stairs, and remembering that that night uh, where where I met my wife uh, the first time. You know, that brings us by uh, back to the thing that hey, to to offer people to connect people on the dance floor and like to offer them exactly the chance to connect exactly, and to meet exactly. their love of their life. Yeah, 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 and that is that is also something that. Uh, that I always have in the in the back of my mind while playing. Like I'm I'm thinking this this scene, this experience has given me like so much opportunity. Mm. Like maybe I I can do this for someone. You know, I've I've told you this off camera, like yesterday, some uh a woman gave me this note while I was playing and she uh, wrote on it like, hey, 
I've been listening to you for for 10 years and thanks to you I I understood techno and I told her like I'm I'm so happy that you're that you're sharing that with me it's and deep, it, yeah. yeah 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 and it and it and it and it means a lot to me and please please reach out to me like if you if you have a chance so yeah so your DMs are going to be full after this episode <laughs> <laughs> Get, get some help to do your social media yeah. events. <laughs> He's accessible. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes uh, that's that's like a double-edged sword. I remember because obviously a lot of people know what I do uh, yeah. as my as my main source of income, which is kind of cool but also sometimes kind of like whoa because sometimes people will slide into my DMs and tell me about their childhood trauma and then I'm like Oof, yeah, yeah and I'm like okay but I think this is like not the right place. Yeah, not the exact right platform for that. One time I was in a club in Berlin and I got into a t talks with someone and uh, he asked me, what do you do? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm a psychotherapist. And he was like, oh, cool. I want to become one too. I'm like, okay, what for? He's like, well, I want to find out why my dad did this to me when I was young. <laughs> yeah, and I was like... I think you just just need therapy. Like mm. you don't need to become a psychotherapist. But yeah, I think there's something um, very therapeutic on in in dancing and like sharing like emotions and and moments with each other. You know, it's a very deep and bonding thing and experience. Like we have the like we we we're having on a dance floor because like we go yeah. kind of go back to the primitive instincts. Somehow, I read a study a few years ago that said that. The beats we hear and feel is like the the rem we remind ourselves like of the beat the heartbeat of what the mothers yeah. when we were a fetus. Yeah, yeah. This hit me hard. Mm -hmm. It was just yeah. like a kind of yeah, it's it's a it's a beautiful thing like yeah, yeah. to be able to feel it just as we did like yeah. 20, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you see like uh, young mothers uh, comforting their child, you know what they do? They they bounce up and down with their kid you Next know to the heart yeah yeah well. and, it, and it w this is also like su such a rhythm thing you know that it is like comforting for people to just like zone out you know like and just like counting along you know which is like so sweet yeah yeah which is like for me it's also like putting myself in a in a like state of trance like after a while like especially like when playing like for long hours once you're like an autopilot it's like <laughs> You close your eyes and you just, uh, you're in a Tesla. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you just like go with the flow, like, ooh, yeah. hands up. Ooh. So this doesn't work with breakbeats. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, what kind of breakbeat, you know? <laughs> Alex, we have a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> He's Alex is going to know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but yeah, um, uh, that is definitely a, a very um, tribal thing, like you said, which, which has been uh, around for like, ever since humans existed and like a very cultural thing. And I think that's perfect to, to turn off your, your head, you know, or forget about your, your phone and, and whatnot, like for a few hours. Yeah. There was a crazy scene in the second Matrix when they danced. Oh, the dancing the party. Yeah, like the Zion party. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. In the cave where, from what I heard from some sources, uh -huh. the... Yeah, inspiration got from the Berliner club scene. Ah. Some clubs and like this kind of influenced the movie, yeah. what they wanted to recreate. And like nowadays, if you just look at most of the people, they just look like if they would be part of this movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, like for movies, sure. Movies, which sure. is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense to, to have drawn, drawn that uh, inspiration from that. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Instagram sucks. <laughs> my handle <laughs> it's you I'm why very, i'm very proud of the handle uh because uh, back when i created it in 2011 or 12 uh, i was a uh, i was still in my uh, edgelord phase so i would constantly say everything sucks at first like instagram sucks the social media sucks your music sucks your podcast sucks whatever <laughs> and then come to find out well maybe it's not as bad as i thought yeah and that's part of growing up you know realizing hey you don't have to be against everything like beforehand you know just to piss someone else off you have other ways to piss someone off you know just <laughs> other than saying that shit sucks you know yeah and uh, 
uh, I have actually gotten uh, some every once in a while I get like an offer to give someone that name that handle oh yeah 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 and I'm like no I'm not yeah I want to have it inserted on my graveyard on my on my tombstone <laughs> <laughs> Then life sucks. Yeah, Vincent Neumann, aka Instagram sucks. Like on my tombstone. And my life sucked. Yeah, well, I hope not. <laughs> In Instagram sucks, but but he didn't, you know, RIP, you know. Nice. Even if Instagram sucks, you're active. Yeah, on yeah, the yeah. Big I'm, world. Yeah, I'm I'm unfortunately very active on Instagram, even though it sucks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe because it sucks. I'm like I like like hate gramming, you know, not hate watching, hate gramming. I hate this fucking thing. Oh, yeah. someone sent me a new DM. Okay, cool. You know. Your answer, your answer. Hey, what's up? Tell me about your childhood trauma. No, actually don't, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> So childhood yeah. childhood traumas, memes, Instagram, and your activities. Yeah, yeah, basically. Like uh, activities Outside of internet and, and music? Do you have a life? Uh, I hope, I hope I do. Uh, yeah, mostly mostly it's like... Um, like dealing with uh, music in, in many different ways or, or forums, you know, like having uh, talks with other musicians and like exchanging like music. Like I started producing like uh, a few years ago and it's actually very very interesting because i'm sure as you know like once you discover a new outlet that you have you get like a totally different perspective on the way you know that outlet you choose is is being made mm -hmm. you know and you get like a total different appreciation for you know how a tattoo is made or how a track is produced you start uh, viewing it or listening to it in a very different way and i find that very very interesting you know to listen to like records that you l used to listen when you were like i don't know 14 15 and then realizing whoa the production is actually really great or whoa this production is actually horrible yeah, you know that's to the backstage yeah 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 that's it's super interesting to to uh, be at this stage of the musical journey quote unquote nice yeah. nice that's also something i realized that uh, making Uh, great music actually takes a super long period of time yeah just like you know as any art yeah yeah just like with coming up with like a great tattoo idea you know like if it's like something that's really well done of course it's gonna take like, like a multitude of sessions you know even just the ideas like i mean very simple designs like just like they're very technically simple to do mm -hmm. but like have a whole concept behind that like Uh, we tend to underestimate uh, this kind of things. Like this, for example, the journey I'm on right now is like uh -huh. to make simple designs, but like to, to make them deep, like to, to put a meaning. Like right now I'm exploring like the whole um, text mm -hmm. I would like to add on my designs. I've been listening to a lot of uh, hip hop and rap. Also like this new kind of, like it's not new, but like since a few years, like there's a big impact uh, on the scene, like on the club scene where, Nowadays, you have young rappers that are rapping on uh, kind of house and techno beats, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they rap about what they live in and uh, like the, uh, on the on the dance floors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is super fun because like they have like so many great ideas of just like uh, slang. Yeah, that is very specific to this. Oh, yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah, trying yeah. just like to 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 put it together. So oh wow, the, the new flashes are gonna yeah, be yeah. nice. Like I also like to to combine it with the kind of traditional style or like the, the stuff that i've been doing now and like to find to create just like something new okay okay so it's yeah. gonna be uh somewhere happening here yeah yeah and, and like you said like uh having an idea like everyone can say oh i'm i'm thinking of the greatest tattoo or the greatest track in my mind but actually putting that like on paper or actually producing that takes a long period of time like i remember listening to uh tracks that i was working on and i think i spent like one week trying to figure out the cowbell placement of one track i had like four or five different versions and i would listen to it on my way to work on my way back from work to home and then still feeling like i don't think this is this is sitting at the right place yet you know and i can finally say I figured out the cowbell placement. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really relieved that it was it was finally done. But yeah, that's that's the thing you you only get to fully understand once you're in that 
once you've shared that experience mm -hmm, as well, mm -hmm. you know. But as I just said, like it's do you do things and then you redo them and like remix them or what, however you want to call them. You do the same, like in my case, like the design, then you redraw it one time, two times, three times, uh -huh. 20 times, and then it gets better and better. Oh, yeah, yeah. A friend of mine used to say, like, hey, if you're happy with the first version, you didn't do the job. Yeah. Uh, and that says everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter if it's like music, or like just say, like, hey, I have a one track, like I have like four versions, and like yeah. you're not happy with it, like still, but after a certain time, then the fifth one is the right one. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, that's a thing. Yeah, that's yeah. That's a thing that's very interesting. I also listen to a lot of music, especially um, ambient uh, sound, dub techno, and this kind of stuff when I draw. Yeah, yeah. This really puts me in the zone. So oh, it's yeah, very yeah, nice yeah. Like, to. Because I have very big problems focusing, yeah. also because of my past over like mis misuse of Instagram. Okay. Yeah, the okay. doom scrolling. Yeah, well, Instagram sucks, you know. There we are again, you know. <laughs> there you go. I mean, that, that's the thing. Just like I had to, to focus uh, on my name, on my work, like how I can put myself in the zone, like to be able to be super focused. Because yeah. like, when I tattoo, I tattoo, so it's cool. Like I have my focus, but when I draw, yeah. And then I have like this kind of other kind of distractions. Like even when I, f if I use like the inspiration I use like from uh, the internet, it doesn't matter if it's like going from yeah, Instagram, yeah, yeah. Behance, Pinterest, whatever. Yeah. And then you just like import the images on some program and like somehow you just land in some other app that you're oh, yeah, not yeah. supposed to yeah. open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's very interesting. Yeah. Do you experience this as a, like when you dig music or all this stuff or like when you produce? Uh, I, I experience... The way I I make music is I I listen to a lot of uh, non techno music like mm -hmm. mostly music with guitars, you know, <laughs> for example. And there's there's always like certain parts in a song that I really like. For example, like a chord progression, you know, or like a some some kind of melody. And if if that gets stuck in my head, then I w would like take it and put it in a track. And then build the track up from that, you know. Not obviously not copying the whole melody, you know. I'm not gonna put uh, deepesh mode. I just can't get enough, <laughs> and then be like, oh, I'm gonna make a track out of that. But like working with like the chord progression and something. And um, there are some artists that create like something out of out of nowhere, you know. They come up with ideas, and there's other artists that take inspiration from something and. Uh, convert it into something totally new, you know, mm -hmm. just like what I did with the uh, Techno The Gathering cards, you know, I mixed the uh, Magic The Gathering card game with uh, the Techno scene and DJs, you know, in that scene. And same thing with mi music, basically. And it's a very, very cool journey that I actually was kind of afraid for many, many years to, to do because producing music is like such a wild field um, because you ask like 10 people how do I produce music and you get like 10 different responses you know and I mean maybe it's the same for tattooing it is yeah it is uh, in my case I had to relearn how to draw because uh -huh. during my studies like I like when I started tattooing I went back to my parents and uh, I looked for my portfolio from what I've done all over my studies and like I could see how we got formatted. Yeah. From very creative to graphic designers. Uh. And then I had to go back but the other way around and just like yeah. to stop thinking about grids, things that are very clean and all this stuff, just like to be more creative and all this stuff and yeah. then the techniques and then to go back to painting and use different yeah. uh, pen, pencils, whatever you were yeah, using. Yeah. And just like to let the creativity flow, because like that's always what I said about it, about Instagram being like a kind of doom thing yeah. with the scrolling. I was following tons of amazing artists from different fields that inspired me, okay. and it really took me many years, like until now, to understand. Okay, this I can do. This I can put into my art. Yeah, and like I'm poor, poor developing my own stuff, but it okay. literally took three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. me to get there. I can totally understand that. It was like the same for me, uh, like actually f finding my sound, because that's the thing. Like, uh, it's it's not something you uh, consciously pursue, but something that just happens, you know, like that, that feels good. And I had, I was struggling for, for the first few years uh, to 
to accept the fact that what I produce is um, you, you've heard the, the tracks is like very different from from what I play. You know, it's like very very smooth and very zero banging stuff. I want to say because the reality is when I come home after work at like 5 p.m. The last thing I want to do is like create 140 that BPM fucking bangers yeah, you know, yeah. on the floor. I'm like, no, please, no, anything but that. And I, I had a talk with like many different artists and I was like, hey, um, do you think I, I should put this out? And most of them told me like, don't force it, you know, just if something comes out the way it comes out, then that's probably the way you should pursue it. And I've been really happy with accepting that, you know, that uh, what I play is different from what I produce and they can they can still coexist, you know. Sure. Just like with, with the tattoo, you know, you can accept the fact, huh, I'm, I'm drawn to this kind of style, you know, or I'm drawn to this artistic vision that I have, even though I had like maybe something something different planned. Actually, for my colleagues, which is, who is more kind of a mentor nowadays, um he told me like hey there is like i asked him like hey this is a situation i'm in how would you like what would you recommend me uh like what what tips would you give me like to develop my art do my own like create my own style and uh -huh. all this stuff and uh, he's been in, in the scene for like 20 years like 20 25 something like this so he's seen a lot and he told me like hey you gotta really love what you do and like about what you just said it's do projects that are or their flashes flash designs that are what he calls commercials that you know you're going to tattoo them but draw for fun as well ah, without yeah, yeah. having the fact okay this is gonna be a tattoo yeah just like draw posters drawings whatever yeah, just like yeah. develop your style and then maybe you can find some things on there that you would be able to integrate to your style and then put on the skin the skin yeah, of yeah. people absolutely which was an amazing tip and now I have like 400 open sketches. Yeah, hey, but <laughs> so it's great. <laughs> it's, it's the same for me. Like sometimes I, I, I will get home from work and like inspiration just randomly hits me, you know, while I'm doing laundry. And then I'll do like the, I don't know, the drum rhythm or something on the washing machine, yeah. you know, on and do like a voice message to myself and then go to Ableton. Like, really yeah, yeah, exactly. And then when I have, once I have time, like put it down. And the beautiful thing is, like without pressure you can just come back sometime in the future and complete that you know it's not like oh i'm running out of time or something you know sure. it's like hey you can you can take the time you you want and you need and good things definitely take time to to create yeah. I, I think what's the most hard in all this is like to find a system to simplify the creation process uh -huh. in my case it was it took me three years like i actually figured it out last week <laughs> It was to, like, when I, when I see something cool on the internet, I make a screenshot. Okay. Which is nice. But then you have 2,000 pictures in your feed. Like, oh in your God. pictures. Yeah, yeah. And then nothing sorted out. And I have the chance to have an amazing person that's helping me to do these projects. Anna, and she told me how to organize the chaos. <laughs> and per per, I could figure it out. And, like, I could create the mood boards and like right now i simplified the whole drawing process by just like okay now i have like my folder with for example uh reptiles doesn't uh, matter if like snakes yeah. crocodiles whatever yeah. and then like the other one is like patterns and then i i find like hey, okay i like really like the shape of the snake but i want to put this pattern inside uh -huh. and like then you you put just like the pick the you do the mood board yeah, yeah, of your yeah. design tuck, 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 and then you yeah. you put it together and like you do you finally do it yeah, yeah which i didn't have the capacity to do before because i was totally overwhelmed about this kind of I had like literally like 100 pictures around me yeah, and I was yeah. like okay this one got my attention but like then you scroll like one time down and you're like oh this and this is co cool as well and yeah, you can't yeah. focus on one thing yeah 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 for sure for sure it, it takes time to to get a system you know where you can where you can actually maneuver through this labyrinth mm. of different things just like with like tracks you know um, you also take some time to have like a system where you can remember tracks, you know, because God knows there's like so much music coming out every week and we have to... Every day. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. It's gotten more and more over the last couple of years. That's actually insane. But if you have like a good system to sift through it, then that's still manageable, I think. How do you remember music? 
Uh, mostly, like if I if I'm having like a gig, uh, mostly going by the covers and also like the the, the names. Like I re- I will remember like artist names and then tracks, and I will remember the melody, and I'll be like, oh, I think this this will be good. I will admit sometimes I have no idea, and then I'm like, I have to listen to this one again mm-hmm. while something else is playing, and then. Most of the time, it'll, it'll hit me, and I'm like, ah, I remember it was this tool track by, I don't know, Oscar Muleo or something, and then it'll be like, okay, okay, okay. This we can use. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, because that's what I think it's very impressive, like, as a DJ, when you put, like, when you play not one, not two, but, like, three or four sounds at once. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, holy shit, like, if you take a whole set, especially the long sets that you're allowed to play, for example, in clubs in Berlin, yeah, yeah. which is, like, three, four, five or more hours, yeah how many tracks do you need for such an amount of time and then like to remember okay this works with this and this and this and i can put this like yeah it's amazing and impressive like how much focus you can have and you need yeah, to yeah, do yeah. this yeah, the yeah. real performance yeah for sure for sure i remember um like you said it's very impressive to be able to do this to do like three or four tracks at the same time which is not something i can do most of the time. I once played after DVS1 in Distillery Leipzig and you know Zach, you know, he plays, it's always like at least Layered. three tracks running and I thought you know, I can do that too you know, and I started <laughs> after him and, and, I, and I was like uh, unintentionally clearing the floor and I was like, I guess this isn't working because I thought like oh i can do this too you know and then i realized no i actually cannot and then i went back to playing my normal one track okay another track and then luckily people came back i want to i want to say they came back is the sync button a thing to me no no (laughs) you didn't have to answer this question no 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 no, no. i mean i mean i i could but i'm like no no but i I don't blame anyone who, who does it you know but yeah sometimes you get carried away and I think that goes back to sticking to to what you can do. Sometimes you want to impress other people, you know, but yeah, that's too too exhausting. Like, no. Do you have this kind of things in your head when you play to impress other people? Uh, I used to. I, I used to have uh, this this thing in my head. Oh God. Uh, of thinking, oh, I, ha- I have to, I have to educate the people, you know, about sound. But that's actually not, not something I, I want to do, because if you put your ego above the, the people on the floor, you know, that are with you mm-hmm. together, you risk losing them, you know. Of course. You like uh, if you're if you're like, hey, I guess they're not up for electro, but I'm gonna play another electro track, you know, and then they will understand. It's like no, they probably won't, you know. And I've come to terms to to accept that, you know, that I'm as much a part of the journey as they are, you know. And it's better to put your ego like to swallow your your pride and be like, okay, I wanted to play something else, but they're more like I don't know into like groovy stuff. Okay, I might as well play groovy stuff. You know, groovy tracks that I like, of course, you know. Do you have any fun stories about that? Uh, When you empty the floor or like packed in with a trashy track? Oh, God, yeah. I (laughs) definitely remember (laughs) clearing the floor many, many times. What's the trick? What are the tracks to play (laughs) to clear a floor? To to clear a floor? Oh, my God. It really depends on, on uh, on the floor. I once remember... I think I played a, a track, Sire track, out of all artists uh, at like a festival, and it was like eight in the morning, and I thought, yeah, the sun is coming up. I think it's time for a track, Sire track, and I was like, no, that's actually not the case at all. And everyone went to the bar, and I was like, <laughs> well, that's not what I had planned. Okay, here's some more hot groove for you, you know. And then they all came back, you know. So like, okay, and that you puts know. you that puts you in check, you know. Like, okay, you're not above, you know, anyone else. But that's that's part of the part of the job, you know, to yeah. risk something and then miraculously fail and then be like, okay, <laughs> I'm sticking to <laughs> my guns, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. And the good tracks, peak time track. A peak time track that that fill the floor. Uh, that works. That that works. Oh, I I used to uh, really really play love playing uh, Audion mouth to mouth. Love that track to death, and I. Uh, would play it 
at like peak time and it was like mid tens like 14 15 when this track was kind of old and a lot of people had forgotten about the track and it hit every time i played it it was like insane the other track that almost always works is one i also al almost always play uh, rock coke and shit that's like my uh, my meme theme track for whatever reason i mean you know i have like a, a, a playlist on my usb called drug tracks i gotta play at least one drug yeah. track per set if it's like paul johnson ecstasy rock coke and shit something of that because then people will be like "Ooh, i think i know what he's talking about you know <laughs> like oh really <laughs> <laughs> i can see it in your eyes yeah exactly <laughs> or uh, drugs amphetamine like come on you know that's that's what are you talking stuff. about the track of course you know <laughs> Oh, jeez. Any yeah. other tracks that are not from that sound that you like to play? Uh, not from electronic music? From electronic music, I really uh, like to play uh, Vanqueur, uh, Lyo, which is from 1992. Uh, mo many, many people play the Maurizio mix of that one because it has like a really thick kick drum. Mm. But I always play the original because it's very funky and very, very bouncy. I used to, I I played like a few openings at Berghain and I would always finish with that track because it has like one of the most beautiful outros, I think, like after nine minutes. And it's like so, so moving to me because this track is like more than 30 years old and it still does the job, you know? And it's like so, that's so interesting about, about the whole scene, you know? You have like uh, tracks that are like so old but so timeless in quality you they know still work yeah they, they still work and people are like what is this track you know so yeah that's one of those tracks that that really that really move me and and really still still touch me after uh, of course uh, after all these years you know yeah. great Coeur, Leo, check it out vincent <laughs> jonathan tschüss ciao <laughs> ciao kakao Oh,